Six years ago, I left my life in England behind. I joined my family to take on the daunting task of restoring this stunning French chateau. Three years later, I started a YouTube channel. And since then, we've shared our story with viewers all around the world. And not forgetting all the friends who've helped us along the way. We do everything ourselves, from restoring the gardener's cottage, maintaining the huge forest and estate, to restoring the grand interiors back to the way they were over 100 years ago. A lot has changed, but we've barely scratched the surface. And our journey here has only just begun. My name's Michael, and I'll be your host for this amazing adventure. This is Doing It Ourselves. Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. I'm back in France from my little trip away. Uh, as you can see, I'm outside the cottage. The weather is gorgeous. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about a project uh, a project that I started, you haven't seen it yet. It's a project that I've been dreading, but also been looking forward to, but I've put it off for a very long time. But before we talk about that, we're gonna talk about the cottage garden because everyone wants to see how I got on with it. Uh, and it has been planted. It was actually planted a few weeks ago before I went to England. It's looking gorgeous. We moved some things around, gave some things a bit more space. There's blues and pinks and whites and yellows and oh, it's just a dream. So what we're gonna do is gonna show you the cottage garden and then we're gonna go and talk about the other project. Right, everyone, welcome to the cottage garden. Uh, I'm gonna try and get in there and show you some of the different flowers that we've got. Uh, I do know some of the names now. So we've got some chives at the back here. They're flowering, their flowering season's almost over. Um, we've got some uh, dahlias here, yellow ones. I'll try and get in. This is a bit of red valerian. Although it seems to have collapsed, I need to tie it back up. Let's try and get over here. I feel like Alan Titchmarsh. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some gladdies, gladiolis, hello possums. I actually did buy some foxgloves from the local garden centre, but I didn't realise they're biennial. So for the first year, they're just a rosette on the ground. There's no flowers. So I, I, I went with my wheelbarrow and a shovel. Uh, I went down to the lake and I found some wild foxgloves and I dug them up and I put those in there. They are toxic, so I had to wear gloves. If you eat that, that will stop your heart. So we won't touch that. We've got some candle larkspur, also known as delphinium. We've got lupins. There we've got pink ones and yellow ones. This is called something bee blossom. It's a type of evening primrose. We've got some fuchsias in there, roses, more foxgloves. Unfortunately, you've missed the peonies. They do flower for a very short time and they were stunning, but they're gone now. We've got a spotted canna lily. Uh, we've got lavenders there, alliums some Peruvian lilies. Uh, what have we got? Some carnations here, some phlox, petunias, zinnias, trailing something. I don't know what they are. Uh, we've got everything. We've got a, bit, a big mixture and hopefully next year and maybe even the year after that, that's when it's really going to come into its, into its own and it, will, um, it really will be the perfect cottage with the cottage garden. So there you go. Okay, so if you've seen a few of my previous videos, you'll know that I put a brand new window in the cottage. After I did that, I had a new, a new perspective from this gorgeous new window uh, that I could see directly out. And directly outside was this very tatty old flower bed, which had some herbs in it and some gravel uh, and mostly weeds. The idea was let's spruce up that garden and turn it into a cottage garden so that when I look out the window, I've got a beautiful view. So I did that. And then I looked and I thought, my beautiful cottage garden is being spoiled by a very tatty old greenhouse behind it. So let's, let's look at the greenhouse, what we've done. I went to the local DIY shop and I, I bought some putty, I got some, um, some paint and things like that. And my idea was that I was just going to patch up the greenhouse, the bits of putty that were, that were missing. I was going to um, give it a lick of paint, maybe replace a few little pieces of glass that were damaged. 
Um, but on closer inspection, when I actually started to take out some of the old putty, I realized that underneath the glass, the metal was just rusting away. And it's been here 120 years, so it'd be a real shame to lose it. So the only thing to do was to take all the glass out, every single piece, and start again. So yeah, the greenhouse, as you can see, it's very rusty. Uh, and so what I need to do now is I need to finish uh, using a pressure washer. I was gonna actually have this sandblasted, but the guy said it's gonna make a huge mess and you have to use masses and masses of the, of the it's actually ground glass um, and it will be everywhere because you know it sprays everywhere and there's such thin bits of metal. He said the whole greenhouse will be full of sand. It's gonna make a huge mess. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to just pressure wash it all with water just to get anything loose off. And I've actually got a special product that you paint on and it kills the rust. It stops it dead in its tracks. Uh, and then after that's done its job, we then will paint it with a special metal um, undercoat, which will protect all of the metal. And then after that, the greenhouse door has just slammed in the wind. Um, uh, after it's all been coated we're gonna, with an undercoat, we're then gonna put a lovely color on uh, uh, like a linseed oil based old fashioned formula paint in the same color as the cottage front door and windows. But it's the sort of project you're only really gonna be doing once every 50 years, I think. So what we need to do is we need to go and get the jet washer and we need to finish off clearing off this metal. <laughs> Right, so while I'm working up there, I noticed that, uh, as you can see here, some of these leaves are getting caught by the, um, by the pressure washer. And it's, it's a lovely plant, this hollyhock, and it's a shame it can't stay here. So I've got a harebrained plan to try and dig it up without killing it and moving it. Uh, and it hasn't flowered yet, so it might be okay. I don't know who planted this. It might have been Mo. Right. I'm gonna have to get, get up behind it. Oh, my poor lemon tree, look. It'll be all right. Right, there might be enough root for it to survive. Let's try and find somewhere we can put it without damaging it too much. There's two there. The 
okay so I just put them in like that maybe I can split it up actually oh, right uh, let me get a wheelbarrow some nice manure so I need some soil and luckily we had this huge pile of rotted down manure from the stables and also here we have some topsoil oh, if I can get some so I'll, what I'll do is I'll put some in the shovel some of that some of that and mix it together it should be quite happy living in that black gold So they're in position and let's just pull it up with our little mixture of topsoil and manure. The manure is great because it's, it holds a lot of moisture. So in this dry weather, this should be okay. Oh, it's red hot. <laughs> what do they say? Only mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. Mad Englishman as well. There we go. The next thing will be to fill up a bit of water. Right, so I just need to move it somewhere. Uh, somewhere a bit, a bit better here. Doesn't work there, does it? Basically where it was, but outside now. There we go. Right, I'm going to water it, give it a quick prune, and maybe put a stake in. But we'll see how it goes. It looks quite well supported. That'll be all right. It's damaged. Two. Yeah, I think it'll be quite happy there. Right, there we go. Back to work. Okay, so I've been working really hard this afternoon. The sun is very hot, but that's a good thing because as soon as the metal gets wet with the jet washer, it actually dries very quickly, so it doesn't have a chance to rust any further. Um, but the bits that I have done, um, I have actually managed to get most of the party off the main body of the greenhouse, which is fine. Uh, and um, I've got a couple of bits here. I'm just gonna have a little test. I've got some anti-rust treatment for the metal, and I've also got a little grinder that goes on a drill just to get any loose bits off. So we're going to give that a go and um, hopefully by the time you've seen this video it will have been done anyway. So so let's get to it. Right so uh, I did mention earlier that I have actually painted a couple of bits of it. That was just a test to see what the colour looked like. The colour is the same as the doors and the windows of the cottage so it all looks beautiful together um, but that might have to be scraped off. Um, but I'm just going to test this little drill on here See if I can get some of the loose bits off. As 
you can see, that's made quite a big difference. We were actually back to the bare metal there uh, compared to this bit, which that bit was exactly the same as that not two minutes ago. Uh, so I think that's the best thing is to go over it with, with that wire brush, just lightly, just to get any loose bits off. But this, this is a special product, uh, anti rui which means excuse my pronunciation, that means anti-rust. In ink color means it's clear. It's multifunction, it goes direct to rust and you can add it to paint and it stops and stabilizes rust. So let's have a go. It takes 12 hours to dry. We've got time. So let's give it a go, see what it does. I don't know if it actually chemically stabilizes the rust or if it just stops it rusting further. I don't know how it works, but I should have a pot for this, but that's all right. Let's try that then. Oh. It does seem to actually take the rust away. It does. It's actually sort of dissolving the rust. That orangey color is disappearing. I mean, obviously it doesn't happen instantly. It's going to take time. But that's the most important thing. I mean, we could put paint straight over this, but if a little bit comes off, the rust will return. Now, I must say this product well, I wasn't expecting it to smell awful, but it's actually got a... That damn cockerel. Uh, it's got a lovely smell. It smells a bit like a cross between linseed oil and uh, natural turpentine. A bit much like a, a lovely sort of good quality oil paint. Um, so, I'm not going to be... Again. Uh, I'm actually not going to be sniffing fumes in this heat, which is great. Um, and it seems to be working. So I'm going to have to, yeah, crack on with this. And um, that greenhouse door is going to slam. Uh, I'm going to have to crack on with this. And as I said, by the time you're watching, God, never work with animals and children. Uh, by the time you're watching this, it's probably all been done. So uh, yeah, so I just want to say thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you very soon for another video. Bye.